Hello everybody and welcome to this tutorial on the Morphological Segmentation plugin. This is a plugin that belongs to the MorphoLit J library and allows you to do segmentation of 2D and 3D images based on morphological operations including the water cell algorithm. In this case I'm going to show you how to segment the blobs image from the samples of image J. To start the plugin you click on plugins, MorphoLit J, segmentation and then morphological segmentation. And then we get the image embedded in, inside the graphical user interface of the plugin and a set of parameters on the left side. We can zoom in and out in the image, we can pan the same way we would do on a regular image of an image. So let's go back to a reasonable size and have a look at the options that we have. The first thing to decide is the type of image that we're using. Since we're, we are um, employing the water set segmentation algorithm, we're expecting at least to use this type of uh, algorithm, what we could call a border image, an image that looks like this one in the icon, where we have borders of the objects that are brighter than the rest of the image. But as you can see, this is not the case on our input image because we have very solid objects with uh, homogeneous intensity inside the objects. For that reason, we have to use the second option, which is called object image. That includes an, a new, um, an extra step to calculate the borders. You could use something else, but here we propose to use the morphological gradient with a radius that you can select in pixels uh, in this box. By default, there is a one pixel radius, which is usually a good option. And finally, we have the watershed segmentation panel which by default has only one parameter. This is the tolerance or the dynamic value of the range of intensities under which we're going to consider minima that are close by as belonging to the same minimum. That means that for an 8-bit image like this one, if two minima are within just 10 intensity values, they will be considered the same one. Let's just run it and see what it means in real life. So if we click in run, very fast we get the result. We have um, in the log window a set of messages explaining which uh, operators have been used. And then on top of the image we get the result as a color label image uh, overlaying with some transparency on the input image. As you see, we get our objects split it into different pieces. So this is what we call an over segmentation. To avoid this, we can play with the tolerance value. By increasing the tolerance, we get more minima merged together, so we're going to have less segments because the watershed segmentation algorithm is going to flood the image from less minima. So let's try, for example, something like 20 and run again. See how now we get many less objects and they're most of them correct, but we still have some problems, so we can still increase this value, let's say we use 35, click and run again, and then we get a very satisfying segmentation. We have four different options on displaying the results. We have this one by default, which is called overlaid basins, but we could also display only the dumps between the different catchment basins in red. You can see it better here. We could also display only the different color labels or just the water set lines. At any moment, if we like the result, we can click on create image and the image that is displayed in the canvas will be also created as a separate uh, window. And at any moment, we can go back and forth between the result image and the input image just by checking and unchecking the sole result overlay option. There's one more thing. If, if you see here, we have separate um, objects with one pixel distance between them. This is what we call the water set line. But sometimes we're not interested in that. So we can check the advanced options of the water set segmentation and uncheck the calculate dumps. Um, checkbox. In that case, if we rerun 
the segmentation, we get objects that are touching each other. And this would be more helpful depending on the type of analysis that we're going to use later. Finally, you can see it better if we select the catchment basins. Okay, just one more thing. If we are not happy with these colors, we can always randomize them by clicking on subfield colors as many times as we want. And we could also merge some of these labels together manually by using the point roy tool, then keeping the um, shift key hold and then selecting the different labels that we want to merge together. And if I click on merge labels, then all these labels will be merged to the first label, to the very first color. Just one more thing, if we close the Wii, we will obtain back the input image without any difference from its initial state. And that's it. Thank you very much for your attention.